Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Torment, Tides of Numenera. This is going to be an RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today here on top of the Bloom. We're not actually in the Bloom, we're in Caravan Serai. In the last episode we were going around and uh, we got ourselves into a little bit of trouble, not too much. Eretus kind of did, uh, and uh, when we talked over here to Master Renio, apparently this is the guy that Eretus uh, stole the boat from, or the f ship from, or whatever. I say boat, it's it's a flying ship, but still, they work like boats. They they are effectively boats, and um, yeah, so <laughs> we had to go to the government square to try and arrange a situation. And now we know that we need to do a favor to a uh, higher up in the government or something like that in order to get a fa I mean, I could have probably just paid the money, but I'd rather not. So let's do it like this because this is more interesting like that. And look at who it is. It's Tibir. How's it going, man? Oh, it doesn't say. As you pass a stack of cargo, a familiar figure steps out from behind, disguised entirely and convincingly as an Aeon priest. Uh, hello again, lad, <laughs> says Tyr. I don't suppose you're ready to change your mind about me joining you? Oh, oh, maybe. Why? Ah, well, it, it seems Reese is still unhappy with me for leaving him on the gibbet for so long, and he wants to strangle me with uh, my own entrails to show me how I'd felt. I naturally am less enthusiastic about the lesson and would like to avoid it if at all possible. Well, therefore, I was hoping I might join you, uh, for protection. I, if you see what I mean, strength in numbers and all that. S strength in numbers, do you mean, do you mean that? If you join me, we're in danger of Reese attacking us? Tibir waves his hands. No, no, I mean the exact opposite. Riss is another coward. As long as you're with me, he won't dare attack. You won't even show his face. Well, unless he can find some greater numbers, I suppose, he thinks. Yeah, I'm not interested, thank you. Apparently, we're not even able to tell him that we kind of could be interesting, uh, interested, but the fact that we only uh, that we have four guys in our team means that we default to no. Yeah, that's actually what I was gonna say. So yeah, are you sure? I'm a man of the world. I know my way around a lot of places. No, thank you. Now, well, good luck to you. And I just want to see if he actually can go back and have the same exact conversation or a similar one. Yeah, we can. So we basically, at any time we want Tibir on our team, we can ask him, and he'll join us. Of course, we need to say goodbye to probably, probably Alligurn, but we'll see how things go. Uh, Reese is very slow. She's so slow. Get on with it, little girl. Oh boy. Anyway, let's go around here. We have a lot of places to see. I imagine we have the gate down here for Memovira. God, wait a minute. That's Memovira. I didn't. Why don't I read the names before I go around? Man, it's so. Bright and shiny up here. Oh, it's bright and shiny in the real world as well. <laughs> Don't doesn't it look like it's so bright and shiny? Uh, no, it is. It is a little bit more bright and shiny. You see this? And you see that? Yeah. Yep. So yeah, I think they desaturate the real world a little bit, at least in comparison to the map. I wonder if I think, judging from earlier screenshots, I think this might be more representative of how the game looked originally, and they just went to a little bit tamed uh, color scheme and color palette, I guess. Uh, but yeah, let's let's go. I guess I guess this works a little bit better if they take advantage of that and just use the colors to the best of their extent, like with this. I'm not really sure they do, though, because these do a little bit... That does look a little bit more tame than, than this as well, so... Yeah, could be, could be. But anyway, let's have a chat here with this guard over here, because we might want to get in there. A man in a brigandine coat stands in front of the heavy wooden gate. His arms are crossed, his feet firmly planted. You got business with a Memovira? Uh, who's the Memovira? Remind me again. She's the boss lady of the bloom. Been in charge for about ten years. Couldn't tell you what the title means, but uh, there's always been Memovira. He narrows his eyes. Uh, and if you had to, that, to ask that question, you ain't got business with her. Uh, no, I don't, actually. Uh, what, what is the, boom exa the bloom exactly? Oh, the game is hanging. In suspense, it is a monster. Oh, yeah, we have heard this theory before. Hmm, but I don't think he is quite literally a monster. A stinking tumor the size of a city, full of veins and cysts and sacs that folk can crawl around inside. Something Sometimes they lead to moss. His sunken eyes gleam as he speaks the word. If you give them what they want to eat, they'll send you another world. Send you to another world, or not, if they decide to feed on you instead. I didn't even want to open the maw. Poor Resh. Resh, that's his friend, I guess. Um, can you tell me anything about else about the Memovira? 
Nobody crosses her, not even the council. He waves a dismissive hand at the passersby. All these poor plotters are scared of her, and that means they're scared of me too. Go work for the Memo Vera, son. That's what my dad's told me. You'll never be anybody in life if folk ain't scared of you. Dad never told me about the bloom, though. I wondered if he even knew, he thinks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so... So you're from here, Sagas Cliffs. Born in Sagas... Uh, in Cliffs Edge. House where I grew up fell into the sea a couple of years back, thanks to the sticker. May the black three... The black three bugger em with flaming bricks. Wh who's the black three? Hmm. Maybe some gods, I suppose. He spits. Joined up with the Memovita and up five years in the bloom. Gets in your head, the bloom does. Whispers to you, tells you to do things, maybe. His eyes gleam. When the boss lady found out, she sent me out here. Through my mate in a maw, he thinks. I still can't remember why. You still can't remember why? You mean you couldn't remember at the time, not... Oh. Hmm, yeah. So what's on the other side of the door? A road. It goes down to the side of the cliff towards the bloom. Nobody gets by unless the boss lady gives the word. Oh, so she's not behind. Okay, okay, that's all, all fine. So I, why did you ask if I had business with the lady? Unless, no, wait a minute. She's the lord of the bloom, right? So she's down there. Ah, I see, I see. So basically it's a... Uh, okay, it's like a... I know, I know what it is. Um, so do you know someone uh, named uh, Zebak Uralau? He works for the Memo Vida and his son is looking for him. The back? Huh, <laughs> yeah. Served with him in the bloom. And seen him since the boss lady posted me out here, though. I couldn't help you, t uh, couldn't tell you where he is now. Okay, well, I'll see you later, I guess. Uh huh. That's that. So that's the way down to the bloom. And we have things over here. We have a Gibra merchant that I suppose is not gonna talk to us, but who knows? Because he wasn't looking at us. Air breathers are fascinating and amusing, he says. But I long to be back among my own. Are you a fish or something? Or are you just. He looks like a fish. He kind of does look a little bit like a fish. Still very much humanoid. But, um, yeah, let's just save the game there. Uh, so let's see. We have a few... Yeah, give it us. A bunch of give it a merchants over here. And, of course, they don't say anything. We got a bodyguard over there and a laborer. Uh, he, de he says, this isn't the best job I've ever had, but you can't beat the view. Well, it seems... It's not a very pretty view. view. I mean, it doesn't matter that, that, that your eye help, right? It's still a monster. You see those veins down there? Well... Yeah, it's it's I guess I understand what they what it is. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? And that kind of might be ribs then. If it I mean, I don't know. It could be just a mess. This craft is capable of carrying one person, two at most. The interior is richly appointed uh, with satin pillows and the air feels cooler inside. It's got air conditioning. It's an helicopter. Huh. Good stuff. What about you, Guillermo del Toboso? This scrawny old man practically tr rattles inside dull and dented armor that was clearly made for someone bigger than him. N nonetheless, his eyes burn with a bottomless fire, and his smile, as fierce as it is genuine, flashes beneath his uh, graying thicket of a beard. Another night, he bellows, clapping your shoulders with his gauntleted hands. You barely keep your feet, the man is stronger than he looks. Another hero in search of great adventure. You stand before the wandering knight Kuji... Kuji Kichano del Tobozo, what brings you to the summit of Mount Ithiador? Uh, he is, he is armed like a knight, he thinks, though he carries himself strangely. Yeah, I'm not a knight, but uh, I'm armed like a knight, as, apparently, I suppose. I mean, I, have, I could be. Whatever you say. We seek challenges that will test our very limits, Eretes declares. And then, we will shun those challenges as unworthy of us and seek quests that shake the foundations of the possible. That defy belief, for we are not just adventurers, noble stranger. We are the breath of adventure herself. Another hero! He is too strong and too strange, he thinks. Man, <laughs> these guys, to think that basically you can't... Without the scan thoughts, you can't know this. You can't know this at all. It's just a completely different character altogether. Because, I mean, not not a completely different character, but this shines a different light in a, a light that shapes every single thing that he, that he says or, or does. Oh, boy, this guy. Tears well in Kinjano's uh, eyes, and he fishes a monogrammed handkerchief from the depths of one of his bracers. Such a noble company, he says hoarsely, dabbing his cheeks. Such a noble goal. Were I not committed to my own path, I would seek to join yours. Uh, but I will not. Instead, might I seek your blessing? Hmm. I wonder if what he would have said if we didn't have Eretis with us. Um, Eretis, would you bless Kijano as he asked? Let's go with that. 
I was hoping you would ask, he says and turns to Kijano, spreading his arms. His mouth wor working soundlessly, uh, the elderly knight bows his head. May your glory always find you. May your burdens only strengthen you and each of your scars tell a better story than the last. And when your enemies are too many and your wounds too severe, may you fall with a smile on your face in peace in your faltering heart. That is lovely. Who wrote that? We did. <laughs> well said, Kijano. <laughs> says... It was it was well written, um, or who wrote that? I guess was well written indeed, but who, well said. More 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 importantly, uh, Kijano says, rise, raising moist eyes. Well said. He straightens and oddly seems larger somehow, taller even. Truly a knight, he thinks. I feel his blessing coursing through my veins. Oh wait a minute, he's talking. He wasn't talking about me being a knight. He was talking about Eretis being a knight. I think, huh? And Kijano looked about again, inspired fettle. Okay, so he's, he's just inspires everybody. Why did you call this Mount uh, Mount Ithiador? I, it's a city, not a mountain. Well, it's yeah, a city. He says, his sweat beaded brow draining together or drawing together. Your senses must have deserted you in the ascent. The heat has baked you in your armor. He lays a gentle hand on your shoulder, turning you to the horizon. Do not allow delirium to blind you to your accomplishments, good knight. You have scaled the very heights of Mount Ithiador, the tooth of the world beast. Adventure lies in every shadow below us. Every sparkle of light is a quest, ready to the take, ready for the taking. So he was talking to me about being a knight. Okay. So what brings you up here? Do you know, he says, that I am not quite sure? My memory is not what it was. I recall kneeling before my family's armor in our estate some time ago. He blinks slowly. Perhaps I was weeping. He smashes his gauntlet against his chest, l leaving a sizable dent. I can't recall, and it doesn't matter. For then, I heard a thunderous roar and beheld a great beast in the skies. I donned my armor and gave chase. A great beast? Uh, what, what kind of beast was this? It defied description, he declares, and so I shall describe it to defy impossibility itself. Thirteen legs, six jaws, a thousand eyes that glitter with malice and flame, scales the color of clouds. Oh, I I think I know what it is. This might be thirteen legs, six jaws, a thousand eyes. This might be the sorrow. I mean, it kind of fits the description a little bit, although the scales the color of clouds, which you'd think would be black... Malice and flame, eh, could be. All right, go on. The horrible beast leered down at me, promising destruction. I promised it death, and it fled across the sky. I followed, darting between the trees. He pauses, frowning. And I don't recall much after that. I remember walking, having various adventures along the way, of course, but I cannot quite recall why I came here. Ah. <sighs> He says, raising a finger. Of course, I must have had a, the frankly brilliant notion of scaling this lonely mountain to better spot a beast from afar. He shakes his head, his wispy beard waggling. Alas, I've seen nothing so far. Uh. Hmm. Hmm. The, the, this first point is actual. I, I think I might have carried, let myself get carried away with his... Apparent delusions. Uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna try to go with this one because this first line is pretty cool. Your beast sounds like a particularly large cloud. I'm pretty sure you ran into a tree. Mm, the thing is, I I let's let's go with that that one. I think this might lead to something else, but my character would say this, so let's go with that. That was an amazing story. Thank you. You are most welcome, he says, patting your hand fondly. It is good to share my tales with a fellow knight. Everyone else raises such peculiar doubts. <laughs> so you said you're looking for a great adventurer. Yes, but I feel I must speak pl plainly, he says, plucking at his beard. Too many people have mistaken me for a common mercenary. <clears throat> I'm not interested in entangling, my in entangling myself in local quarrels. I will not hunt a beast that cannot hunt me in return. And if I am to fight, it must be against a foe of such wickedness that the stars themselves would wink out rather than shine upon a world that could harbor such malevolent creatures. That sounds like... The, uh, the children of the Endless Gate, they have done that. Ch slaughtered innocents. It, yes, they did. Um, so I need to find a worthy opponent for him. Uh, let's go with that one. The children of the Endless Gate slaughtered innocents in the underbelly. Will you hunt them down? I have heard of these scoundrels, he says. They leave pools of blood and shredded flesh in their wake. You are right, my friend. This world cannot bear the blight of these villains upon her skin any longer. Simply say the word, and I shall hunt him down unto my dying breath. Uh... 
Hmm. Sure. Good hunting, Kijano del Toboso. And he's humming excitedly and goes off. I don't know if I sent him to his death. I probably sent him to his death. But that's going to be interesting because that way when we eventually find the children of the uh, Endless Gate, I believe I... Is it that one? Seek the passage for the Valley of Dead Heroes? That No, that's the main quest. Uh, what is the... What is the quest for the children of the... For the children of the... I found a woman. No, that's another thing. Um, Eyes of the Adversary. Nope. Flawed Simulacrum. Did we complete the quest already? I think we did, didn't we? Yeah, we did. But we didn't... Yeah, we completed the quest, of course. We sent... Sent, uh... Kez? Or Zack? Or... Oh, no. Imitawa or something like that. To, uh... To prison. Yeah. The quest of, uh, The murder in, in the underbelly. Uh... And, uh... But we never did find the children of, of the Endless Gate. I wonder if we need to go back to... Uh... The, uh... If we need to go back to... What was his name? The guy, the leader of the, uh... Dendro Ohur and ask him if he has any quests for us. I think I'm gonna do that, but not right now. Right now we're gonna just go over here and uh, com complete the exploration of this level. Dotted with air holes, several crates aboard this ship rattle and jump, apparently just as eager to disembark Those as the crew. Those tattoos hurt? They look like they probably hurt. Does your glow hurt you? Is this one of your riddles? If so, your riddles hurt too. <laughs> I love I love that one. That was amazing. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> I thought he was going to say that it's low hurt. Because it would kind of make some sense. Uh, but, uh, yeah. I, I, that was pretty brilliant. brilliant. Uh, okay, so... We can't go anywhere. That's not a bridge. That is, however, a thing over here that I was almost about to miss. And I do remember... How do I get there, though? Can I... Huh. Atop a nearby plateau, you can just make out the top of a small dome of scintillating blue energy. Yeah, but how do you get there? You don't. Not through here, anyway. I wonder if we need... I, I mean, you, you'd imagine you could just hijack this, this helicopter or something, but you can't. Huh. And you can't go through here because that's just the supporting thing. Unreachable. Yeah, right there. Yeah. So this is not reachable for right now. Okay. It's all fine. It's all fine. It's, it's blocked by a quest. Not a problem. And unless we find, like, a friend that flies. That, that'd be an interesting thing. Let's go to... um, What's the name? What's the name of this? Uh, Governance Square. And continue exploring. We, After all, we do have quests to do there. Uh, and even though we, we have talked to the... What was his name? The clerk? Council clerk, I think? Yeah, we have talked to him extensively. And uh, even though he does have more dialogue that we could explore, there's no real reason to do it. Uh, and uh, let's see. So we have a gate. Let me use WASD keys because it's better for me because I, I don't have the... Uh, no, it works. It works both the same, but I, I like the WASD keys to move the camera around. So, let's see what we have down here. I'm going to save the game just we, before we do, because sometimes it's quite tricky. Metal rungs have been fastened to the side of the structure, extending into the darkness far below. Let's climb down. So, this is not going to take us to the underbelly. What? This is the underbelly. Is it... Oh, that's right. Look at that. We're here. <laughs> well, it's a good thing. <laughs> Good. You know what I was gonna do when we were back in the, uh, back in the, um, uh, Sec Caravan Sarai? I was gonna make a cut. I was gonna come here off camera in between episodes. But I was gonna make a cut. I was considering making a cut to go all the way through, uh, Cliff's Edge and then down the, the things. Yeah, we're gonna need to talk to Imbitu to see if he has anything new to talk about. Especially now that we sent a, uh, yeah. He stares into the middle distance, gaunt and haunted. It was Kiwitawa, he says. She fled just before Fulsom's enforcers arrived. I should have known. I wish I'd known. She tasted of fear and sorrow, but never rage. Never that kind of hunger. Uh, how do you think Kiwitawa, or Kiwatawa, however that's pronounced, discovered the endless gate? We were so proud, he says, is usual cheer deserting him. We chased the children of the Endless Gate from Sagas, never considered that they might bear a grudge, that they might return. He looks at the old oily ceiling. There is a sickness in them, a contagious one. I can only imagine that one of them returned to Sagas Cliffs and died here, perhaps on purpose. Kiatawa discovered the corpse, devoured it, and heard the song that spills from the Endless Gate. Oh, so that's where it got... That, I should have figured. I should have... That's... Perfectly, ex a very reasonable explanation. And it means that the guy that we sent is going to look for... I don't know who he's going to look for, but they they are not here in the city. 
they are definitely not in the city. I wonder if they, he would have come in here and d did my job for me if I did that before. But anyway, we sent him on his way, I, I suppose. As delusious as he might be, uh, he's gonna be fine if he's not delusious. Uh, delu delusious? Delusional? Yeah, delusional. He's gonna be fine if he's not, because that means he's probably a, a cast-off. Although I didn't notice his scar, so probably he isn't. Uh, which means that he probably is delusional. So, yeah, he's gonna be fine. Hopefully. Maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yeah, I will see you later. I will see you later. That was... Farewell, take care. Yes, you as well. That was good. It's good that we came over here because that explains... It's quite an important aspect of that quest. How exactly she got to know the, uh... The, um... Children of the Endless Gate. Yeah. And that explains why they didn't... They had no idea. Huh. Contagious disease, he says. It's just knowledge. Although, I don't really know. It could be the, a disease. It could be like a vampiric disease. I mean, they, they inherent, if they inherent the knowledge by eating the flesh of, of the dead, I'm, I assume they're going to inherent the uh, the vampiric diseases if they have any sort of that stuff. But anyway, that that's the connection to the underbelly. Everything is kind of, it, it's pretty well connected. If you know all the nooks and crannies of the city, you can go anywhere with the, just a couple of loading screens, which is pretty good. I feel like I can take on the world. Really? Rin, why do you, why'd you, what? Rin, what you did, what, why did you go over there? What's going on? Um, how how are you holding up? Uh, before I met you? Okay, she goes on to say the same thing. Okay. Uh, right, where to now? Yeah, over there. I don't know what this is, but let's go. Ooh, it's a bar. No, it's a disco. It's a library? It's something. We got a guy called Snurf. And a guy called Le called Lanuring. Or Lanuring. Sally Me... We found Sally Mary. Save the game. Let's murder this guy. This tall... Oh, it's a woman. This tall, stately woman studies the air with the intense focus of an artisan. She senses you approach and faces you. Concentration turns to surprise, then awe tinged, tinged anger. Adan, she says. I haven't seen you in ten years. Ten years. I cannot begin to imagine what your excuse might be. Our last night together was so incredible, she thinks. What could possibly have driven him off? Uh... Okay, so let's play her and murder her in in, this, in our sleep. Let's do that. Hmm, let's be really mean to her. Uh, let's see. I fell in love with someone else. No, I met a lot of people. I, if I... If you want an apology from me, you'll be waiting a long time. Let's go with that one. I think... I think Adan might have been a, a jackass from, from what we learned so far. Or, apparently that's our name. I actually should write that down, shouldn't I? Um, because, or at least one of our names. No, wait a minute. Hmm. Hmm. Let's, let's write it down. I, I just wrote it down. Okay. So, let's go with that. If you want an apology from me, you'll be wasting, uh, waiting a long time. Alligern chuckles bitterly. Sally Mary, studying your face, gives no impression that she heard him. Yeah, she's probably just focused on me. She takes shakes her head. Well, she says, at least my memory of your temperament is accurate. See, I was right. Despite the name, you never change, do you? I so I can pretend to be the changing god here. Awesome. Awesome. You left me in the middle of the night without a word of thanks, Sally Mary continues. After I introduced you to the Order of Truth, connected you to my contacts at the Oasis, helped you with your research. She settles her hands on her hips, a lone finger tapping your impatience. What I'm saying is that I have a problem, Adan, and you're going to help me with it. You owe me that much. Um... Uh... Yes, we are talking about that. Don't ask that. Just... <laughs> we are talking about that, for sure. I mean... It's, right? It's gotta be. It makes sense. In the middle of the night. Unless they were doing something incredible that wasn't that in the night. But... Hmm. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Let's go with that. Doesn't it? She says. Well, it's a bit of a long bitch, so do let me know when you're ready to talk it over. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm gonna ask you uh, maybe the next episode. We still have time for this episode, so let's see what this is. This one is. I'm helping Alligern here with a problem. Have you seen a priest named Orthfang? Uh, not recently, she says. Mean may know where he is, however. She turns her attention to Alligern. Amazing, she says, still toddling about in Adan's shadow after all this time. It's a wonder you ever found time to be an Aeon priest. <laughs> the she, wait a minute. Adam's shadow. She affects a a pained a pained expression. Oh my apologies, you quit, didn't you? I keep forgetting. 
Oh, that, okay, okay, so I think that, exp yeah, okay, so that, that, I, that's not new information. Elegant was kind of betrayed by, um, I think from what he said, I don't remember exactly, it's been a while, but I think it was betrayed by the Changing God, and that's why he's seeking retribution. Uh, so, but yeah, let's, I don't think that the Changing God is a really nice guy, so I'm probably with him. I'm, my character likes him, so that's gonna be our motivation there. Uh, but for this lady, I'm now realizing exactly what's going on. She didn't actually want to kill me, she sent her tugs to get whatever was... Because she was looking for the Changing Guard herself, so she's not on my list anymore. She's actually... Let's let's use this to our advantage, but I think we kind of got ourselves uh, in a little bit over our heads right now. Because uh, the moti what motivated me to lie there was that I wanted to, to, to kill her, but use her a little bit more, a little bit before, um, before we actually did it. Uh, but now I, I need to put up the facade, because otherwise things might go badly. Oh boy, we're in a predicament, aren't we? Oh boy, let's see what Alicorn has to say. I'm surprised you even know what an Aeon Priest is. <laughs> the Order of Truth is supposed to share knowledge, you hide it. And with good reason, she says smoothly. The Order of, is full of spies, cutthroats, and, imb and imbeciles. None of them worth the risk, she thinks. I... From what we've heard, that's actually a very, a fairly accurate re description of what the order is. But eh, we haven't met them yet, so yeah. So uh, what have you been doing while? Oh, wait a minute. Did she reply to me? Uh, not recently, so she doesn't know where he is. Uh, what have you been doing while I was away? Ah, much of the same, she says casually, advancing my research, working on one book or another, handling tasks for the city when they arrive. The time has flown past, frankly. Uh. I'm trying to repair something called the Resonance Chamber. Uh, this might... Yeah, let's go with... I think if she knows something about this, this is going to be good. But I don't also... I also don't trust her because she might want to use that to her advantage. But I think I have a position as the pretend changing god. I think I might have a, p a position of power over her. So let's see what happens. Ah, that contraption, she says. I'd be delighted to help, as I was before, but I'll need you to do that little favor for me first. Enter the anechoic lazarette and uh, make it safe for me to resume my work there. Uh, if you seek assistance from the others in the order, do be careful. I suspect one of them is an informant to the Memovira. Too many of our, f uh, of our finds have been pillaged by her thugs. Huh. So, who's this Memovira again? She l gives you a long, strange look. Is your age catching up with you, Adon? She says at last. She's a crime lord. She rules the bloom. Any of this tingling any bells? She ma ma massages her eyes with her fingers. I'm going to assume you have other things on your perfectly healthy mind. It spares me from asking any probing questions that would simply embarrass us both. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't have asked that. That's true. I forgot. I'm, I, I, I'm sorry. I knew that. that that's, that's actually bad. I, I knew that, of course. But at least she doesn't seem to mind that too much. Uh, so, hold on, you think there's a spy in the Order of Truth? Almost certainly, she says, losing interest, but I let Min worry about that. Spies aren't a problem if, uh, you never share your secrets. Huh, <laughs> yeah, I see. Well, I'll talk, I'll talk to you about your favor in a little bit, but for now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Torment, Tides of Numenera. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye. It's very col colorful over here.